Charm is a company that builds and maintains a bunch of different open source projects, mainly in the Go ecosystem. But if you're not a gopher, you might be more familiar with Gum, which allows you to have interactive shell scripts. So if you're writing out those bash scripts and you want to have a multi-select in there or you want to have a text input field, all of those different things, you can actually incorporate into your script. We've actually just done an insane amount of releases. Like I want to say we have upwards of like 20 different projects and we're a very small team. So we actually have done releases for I would say at least half, if not more, in the last month. So in this video, I'm gonna recap some of the releases that we've done and some of the features that you have to look forward to and some pretty sick bug fixes. So without further ado, let's go. One that was just released a few days ago is actually for VHS. If you're not familiar with what VHS is, it's actually a way that you can programmatically generate demo videos or GIFs, write a sequence of commands that you would run in your terminal and you can actually write that to what's called a tape file and send that to VHS and it'll actually give you an image or a video or whatever other specified output that you've provided. It supports everything that FFmpeg supports, so a pretty broad range of outputs and it allows you to generate that all with tape files. So this latest release, this actually allows you to manage environment variables in your tape files. So if there's something that you need set in your environment that you want to declare pretty explicitly, then you can do that now in your tape files. This is great for if you're working on teams and maybe you have different people that need to be able to produce these videos. You don't have to set up your own little environment configuration outside of the tape file. Huge. And then also thanks to Delta, who is a pretty prolific charm contributor. You can now customize the character used for the prompt. As of a few days ago, the latest releases of both Huh and Bubbles give you automatic window focus event management. So if you were focused on some terminal application where you have a text input field, when you click on your browser window and it unfocuses that window, it will automatically hide the cursor for you. So that's just a nice little UX change that makes it a little bit nicer to work with instead of having this cursor like blinking at you constantly <laughs> while you're working on something else. And that is covering both Haunt and Bubbles because Haunt does use Bubbles under the hood. So that's also what is encompassed in the Bubbles release. But there's also some additional functional arguments that you can give the paginator. So instead of having to declare some of these things directly on the model, you can now do it when you initialize your paginator. Actually, this was also a few weeks ago. We fixed a ton of bugs. Dude, this release was massive. This was definitely one of those things where like, look at all of these commits. This was definitely one of those releases where we looked at the project and we're like, oh, this, we have not released this in months. And just like there had been so many PRs merged. It was so much to try and summarize like what the changes were and just like double check that everything's working well. Um, yeah, it is definitely on my to-do list to improve our test coverage for bubbles just to make it easier to just merge things and know that things are going to work. <laughs> So yeah, this was, it's, Bubbles has had a lot of love in the last month or so. So Wish has also had some new releases, just a lot of bug fixes. So if you are an avid Wish user, which is the library that you can use to serve applications over SSH. So if you've ever bought coffee in your terminal, for example, that is actually working with Wish under the hood. So yeah, this one as well had a release a few weeks ago and then one a few days ago and mostly just updating documentation and fixes which we love to see. Glow had a huge release. So Glamour had a release. This one actually introduced Tokyo Night as a new theme. You know, we love a good terminal aesthetic, okay? It was really exciting to see Tokyo Night added as one of the default themes. We basically made it a major release version because now it is fully offline before you had the option to stash and that would kind of uh, stash files to a remote server end to end encrypted and would allow you to access that from other machines based on your public SSH key. We did remove that because the underlying library that was kind of handling the user management is actually going out of support for us. And then a few weeks ago, 
we finally put trees into lip gloss. So now you can do trees and lists. So we've now, we've got tables, trees, lists, and it's kind of fun because the lists are actually trees under the hood. Just It's basically just syntactic sugar. So here you can see in the release notes, we have tons of examples on how to use it. And all of this is also in the readme. So if you did want to try out some tree rendering, you can do that with lip gloss. And a reminder that lip gloss is compatible both with interactive applications. So either with bubble T2Es uh, where people can actually interact with the output or you can actually just render it kind of statically. So that's really nice if you have like something that you're already doing with Cobra, you might have one of the commands that just outputs like a static rendering of a tree and this is where you could use lip gloss trees. And that was also a lot of work. <laughs> Ooh, Melt. Okay, Melt has gotten a little bit of love. Melt has not had a, a ton of like new features or anything like that. It, it's kind of one of those pieces of software that's like pretty complete. You know, it's like it does what it needs to do. We don't need to add any bloat or anything to it. Just like keep it stable. Melt is a tool that you can use to actually back up your SSH key pairs with seed phrases. So you can have like a literal physical copy of a backup for your SSH keys. And then Glamour, this is the, the version 0.8. And this was insane. So Carlos actually, this, I can't remember if it was in the span of like one or two weeks, just like we were just seeing all these updates on GitHub of like Glamour and it was like close, 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 like so many issues just being closed. Uh, and yeah, he, he just went to town and just fixed so much stuff in Glamour. It was nice because Glamour did need some love. It's been kind of like, it's been in this kind of limbo period a little bit with Glamour because we've been wanting to kind of outsource some of the rendering with lip gloss instead, but then it's just kind of, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of one of those things that's gotten pushed back and, and then Glamour was kind of like not getting the love that it deserved. But yeah, he fixed so many things. And in particular, the tables, getting tables working properly and then having Tokyo Night as a built-in, like all great stuff. And then uh, Glamour will also now check if SD out is a TTY and will strip styles when it's not. That's awesome because that also means that if you want to, you can output that to a file or something like that now. And it will remove all of the ANSI color sequences from that file so that you aren't getting just like garbled text into the file. So that's a pretty good quality of life improvement, I would say. I did a little batch script with freeze. Uh, that would actually be kind of a fun one to check out for those of you who are interested in figuring out how you can use freeze in your own projects. And then mods also had a release. This was at the end of July. So mods can now support the Cohere LLM and there was also just the interactivity mode had a few updates to it that just made it a bit easier to see like which models are available in terms of like usage if you're someone who uses interactive mode this will be super relevant for you Alrighty, and then last but not least and i'm probably missing some frankly i i'm convinced we released like every single project that we have but yeah, I'm just, I'm, we're going with it. I'm just going to highlight whatever gets highlighted in this video, okay? You can always follow us on GitHub to get notified of all these releases anyway. Wishlist also hasn't had a ton of new features, but in version 0.15, you can copy addresses to the clipboard, which is really nice. Better support for includes. I'm not sure what this one is. Let's check it out. Support globs and relative paths should be relative to the parent, to the path of the parent file. Nice, nice. So just a couple of like quality of life improvements to wishlist that just makes it a little bit more usable, a little bit easier to work with. And then a bunch of bug fixes, which we always appreciate seeing. And look at, oh my gosh, look at all of these like other releases that have required us to like update all the dependencies in wishlist. Okay, huge, huge. And then so many documentation updates. Those are all of the releases that we've done or like some of them. Okay, I definitely missed some. Okay, don't, don't at me, all right? I did my best to keep track of all of the ones that we released as of this morning. So those were all of the releases that we've done in the last month. 
If you want to stay up to date on all the things that we're releasing, follow us on GitHub. I will leave it linked in the description. If you want to get to know these tools more, you can either check it out on GitHub or if you leave a comment below, I can also link you to specific videos on each of the libraries or apps that I've done if there is one that exists. <laughs> so with that, happy coding. Huge day for the gophers, okay? I'll see you in the next video. Bye.